BC, right. we are here for episode nine of Palette Expanders, which is our, I think, never-ending series. I hope never-ending series. I, I, as long as we can brew, I think we said it in a previous one, as long as meads are made in our world, I think we can always bring something. I like that you said, as long as we can brew. <laughs> <laughs> I think the challenge, as I was thinking today and pulling stuff out, I was like, have I given him this before? Like, I'm having to like, step back and I go, did the like, same thing. I picked up a bottle on my way out and I was like, I think I may have given him a bottle of this. <laughs> <laughs> so I could put it back and switch it for something yeah. else. So that's part of it. It's That is the only challenge I would say is mm -hmm. that in some ways we have to like reserve bottles for this series. But yep. we're here for another episode and let's go ahead and get into it. My product I've brought is right here and BC has brought this. So you uh, will probably, uh, I don't know if there's a video for this. Is there a video for this one? Yes and no. Okay. <laughs> I can't disclose that. You might or might not see video of this. <laughs> you will see, you should see video of mine um, as we're going along. <laughs> I know that was really, <laughs> really unintentionally vague, but here we are. Here we are. So we're gonna go ahead and pour these and then we'll get started. These are different. So we have, um, Contrary to last time we did this, we have different colors. The clarity on yours is really nice though. I will. Thank you. Mine is just so dark. I mean, you can't, I don't know that you, you can make this clear if you wanted to. When I saw the color of yours, I expected it to be carbonated. Well, okay, so we did this last time. Let's start with yours. Oh. oh. I know, check you. Oh, oh, that is a really interesting aroma. We'll get to that in a minute. We'll get the, no, no spoilers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay. I get it's like strawberry, banana, fruity. I see what you're saying there. Like, yeah. I mean, maybe not, maybe not those fruits. I'm just getting like a bright fruitiness. Do you remember that like fruit cocktail mead that you made? Where I think it was like a freezer mead. I never. Uh, I said this last time we did this. I ha I was looking for bottles. I found a bottle of it, and that will be. That will be the finale of this video, is you tasting. Ah, Stay excellent. around for the very end. Stick around. For, I taste tested it recently. <laughs> it was so weird. You just you just wait till the end for I'm, that. I'm excited. There's a... a um, I'm like remembering all the things that went into this now too. I, I get a little bit of a meadow foamy, like, uh, <laughs> cotton candy, bright sugary side uh -huh. from the nose. And that, I don't know if that's, con if I'm confusing that with like, we, I did this before with pineapple. I found the same notes of bright pineapple aromas are like pairing with the meadow foam, mm -hmm. bright honey aroma. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's, that's the bulk of what I get. I don't know exactly. I'm not getting a distinct fruit. Sorry, I'm, I, I need to figure out what I did in this. It is very good. I mean. It, it smells like, like if Tutti Fruity was a smell and not just a name, <laughs> it smells like Tutti Fruity. I, I like it a lot, actually. That's a great, great aroma. Sorry, I'm trying to see if I have notes on this one. Because <laughs> I don't think I do. I, I remember, I, rem I remember elements. I know most of what's in here. Okay. Okay. That's what so you, what I get. Overall, you like the nose. I really do like the nose. I t <laughs> it is that bright sugary smell that could be a fruit, could be a fri bright fruit, or could be a metal foam inside. So Switch over uh, to mine. Okay. Very different. Mm -hmm. It's a darker, fruitier kind of mm -hmm. aroma. I play sweetness on this nose. Mm -hmm. sure. There's definitely honey in the nose. There's a lot of acid in the nose too. Mm -hmm. I could pick up big tartness. There's a, a smidge of booziness to yeah, this one. A little bit, a little bit. I can definitely say over all the videos we've recorded in the night, it's really helped open up my sinuses. <laughs> <laughs> Inhaling all these ethanol vapors. It's not an unpleasant right, right. alcohol though. It, it's, it's the type that's like there to say like, hey, by the way, I yeah. need. Yeah, this is not a six percenter, I'll tell you that. I'll spoil that little <laughs> bit of information for you. Anything else you get on it? No, it's it's got like a datey, figgy, raisiny kind of dry fruit. You caught me. It's my raisin. Raisin. <laughs> oh, wow, it's really the colors really developed. 
<laughs> but there's a brightness in there too. There's there's layers, mm-hmm. right? So there's like a figgy, datey kind of layer, that ethanol vapor kind of layer, and then a bright fruitiness on mm. top of that. So you really there's kind of a you're riding a little bit of a wave in here, which is fun. It is fun. I agree. It's not often that you get that kind of thing going on in the nose. There's just a little bit of softness. Mm-hmm. Like, I would believe that this was oat. Okay. Or had vanilla or something hmm. like that. Okay. Well, let's start with yours. How about that? Since we're, we'll go backwards. We'll, I feel great. like it might be, might be a better progression. I don't really know. This one, based off of Roma alone, I think mine might be more potent. Yeah. <laughs> or a big boy mead. Or here's this. Yeah. <laughs> Mouth puckering. Like not acidity, but like the tannic value. Yeah. There's more tannic, more tannic value than I thought there would be. Mm-hmm. It's really hard to discern um, taste because there's a lot of. It it kind of has. You know, you joked about my fruit medley mm-hmm. thing. It has like a fruit medley vibe that it just like bounces around. It's like, oh, here's a little little bright pineapple. Here's some apple Here's some pear. Here's some, you know, but it's not dark fruit. It's all bright fruit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's what's like, that has no berry side to me. Mm, I say that. This is interesting. There's a lot of flavor in this one and I'm having a really hard time. <laughs> Cherry picking out and saying like, yeah. this is the one I find. The nose has the bright, metal foamy, sugary side um, that could be fruit. Mm-hmm. The actual taste of it is bouncing between those fruits. But it still has a little bit of a fake sugary vibe to me. Mm. And I don't know why. I don't know if that's just my brain cannot, I can't disconnect from the... Like an aspartame kind mm, of thing? Not Sucralose? Or like... An erythritol, xylitol kind of I don't, I uh, I wish I could say I've had enough experience to A, B test. I think you've, you've got more experience in that regard. So I don't know for sure, but it does have a little bit of, I'm going to say like, you know, more table sugary vibe, oh. not, not erythritol. Okay. But there's the little tutti frutti, like medley. That That's the okay. medley kind of thing. Okay. But it's good though. It is, um, the, the wash is nice. The Tannic value, the acidity is nice too. Mm-hmm. Um, and I do think the sweetness is balanced. Well, I'm having a hard time with the flavors, so that's the only <laughs> thing. I can't, I can't discern what's what. Okay. Let's we'll switch over to mine. Okay. The nose is so different. Mm-hmm. It is quite tart. Mm-hmm. Gritty tannin. Like it really, the tannin has a lot of texture to it. Mm-hmm. It's dark roasty, chocolatey, caramelly. I'll say the booziness is a little bit stronger on this one. I don't know mm. if ours age-wise are anywhere near each other. I don't know. This one's like, there's like a juiciness in there too. Mm-hmm. Like, have you ever had apple butter? Familiar with this? Mm-hmm. Yes. It's got that like cooked down apple oh. kind of flavor. I got you, yeah. Like it's, like it's been baked and baked and baked. Mm-hmm. Real dark and rich, but still got that that fruit flavor to it. And that fruit flavor lingers and lingers. I've taken one drink of this and it's still sitting in the middle of my palate. Mm-hmm. And when I exhale, I can taste it. It is very... It's got a little bit of like a, a sweet tart mm. kind of flavor, the candies. And you like... You open the, they can, They used to come in three packs. Yeah. You just open them up and put all three of them in your mouth. So it's like all the different, Yeah. like it's got that sweet tart kind of, that I think it's the like chalky tannin and that, that yeah. fruity, that fruity bite. Mm-hmm. And there's like a bit of an acid punch and I get that some from those, like the sweet acidity. No, yeah. it's, it's really good. It's really good. There's a lot going on with this. I, I will happily admit that. I think I do want it to be thicker. Mm, really? Yeah, like it's almost, it's juicy. A word I picked up from you. <laughs> In that way that like it, it washes down just a little bit faster than I want it to. I see, okay. Like I want it to like kind of hang out just a little bit longer, but after uh-huh. I swallow all that's hanging out is just a touch of 
acid, but mostly tannin. I follow you. Yeah. And but like I'm like splitting hairs trying to come up with no, something I, I'd prefer. That makes sense. Like I um it's in my brain I was going towards I don't know if we talked about it enough. Tannic value versus thickness. And I think there is a difference. Tannic value, you know, how kind of clinging to your mouth versus boldening up thickness in a brew. Mm -hmm. Like, how would you, if you were trying to add a bigger body, not necessarily tannin, mm -hmm. how would you add body to a brew to make it thicker? I would, in a five gallon batch, I'd hit it with a half a pound of maltodextrin mm -hmm. and then wait a little bit and see if that helped. Mm -hmm. um, Actually, on the Great Meat Project night, I, I added a bunch of malt in it. Oh, really? Because it didn't have enough chew to it. Yeah. I, I wanted to hang around a little bit more. Uh, that's a that's an easy, cheap way of doing it in a way that's non-fermentable. Yes, yes, I agree. And it adds a smidge of sweetness, but mm -hmm. not a... I would not say it's a back yeah. sweetness. I, I think the sweetness, the acid balance, and the tannin, really, the, everything's in alignment on this. I just wanted to hang out a little bit longer. I want to like <laughs> become chill. friends with it a little bit. <laughs> you know? I... I do like the I do like the balance of this one, and mm -hmm. I think that even with some more time, I, it is not the oldest meat I have. That's for sure. Okay. So. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> one back here from 2017. <laughs> so, um, let's talk about guessing. Now. Okay. Since fresh off yours, and it's off your mind, do you have any guesses on what I have brought to the table? I don't think the honey's been cooked, but it does have like a cooked fruit kind of flavor. Mm -hmm. And it's it's a real apple juicy kind of flavor. And so it's hard to tell though because the color is so dang dark. It is very dark, yes. <laughs> um, I would almost guess that it was like a like a an attempt at apple pie mead, but without the spices <laughs> so like a like a no spices allowed you know, like a baked apple sizer yeah, yeah. i got type you of thing uh-huh but the darkness tells me i'm i'm almost definitely wrong in that but it's got that like round acid fresh punchiness deep dark fruity notes uh-huh um very very good meat oh thank you okay yours <laughs> i gotta i gotta refresh real fast i gotta yeah then I was earlier. I was looking up trying to figure out what the ingredients were. I just can't remember what was done for tannin in here. That's the that's the thing I forgot. So it'll be on your screen previously. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'll yeah. go back and figure it out what we did. I'm like second guessing myself because there's um a bit of a, a a roast at the back end to this that's not heat. That is like I think that's what's throwing me off when I think of roastiness sometimes. You, you know, go to like the nutty side of roastiness. Mm -hmm. But then there's the flip of like roasty that can come from like a, a pepper, like a, oh. a de-seeded mm -hmm. chipotle <laughs> oh. or like green chili pepper or something like that. And there's a part of me that's like, I don't know, I could get a little bit of that, but I, I, I'm also not sold on guessing that. There is more tannin in here than I remember. It is, too. It is very tannic and that's what's, I kind of enjoy that. I mm -hmm. mean, I like the tannic value. I get pineapple, bright, fruity, sugary notes that, I mean, it just screams pineapple mm -hmm. like to me. Like ripe pineapple has that thing. That roastiness is what's really throwing me off. I don't believe that it was a pepper of any sort, but it- Roastiness. There's, there's like a darkness to it, like at, the, like at the end. Like you get the bright sugary and then it sits in your mouth and it kind of warms up that I can't quite explain i can kind of pick up what you're saying there so i don't i don't know and that's what's throwing me out it's like mm. you know expanding the palate to understand what the heck i'm tasting but ah, gosh this is hard well throw one out there i didn't realize that this one was going to throw you for a loop i and i it probably shouldn't be that's what's most frustrating about the situation is that it might be more discernible than I don't, I don't necessarily know that that's the case. Uh, it's been a while since I've tasted a bottle of this, so it's definitely built up some complexity as it's aged that wasn't there prior. And so I, I thought this would be like a pretty chill one when I picked up the bottle on my way out the door, but tasting it now, I understand how this could be like a frustrating detective project. <laughs> um, okay, I'm gonna go, I don't, I don't think I'm right. 
But here's everything I'm tasting. I have strawberry kind of like fruitiness paired with pineapple and some some um, sort of regular, possibly uh, maybe Tupelo like candy like honey that has that that sugary vibe that is not quite meadow foam, which I don't. That's a very weird pairing to me, but that's where my brain is at. And I don't think I'm right, but I'm gonna make the guess. Would you like me to go first? I would love for you to go first. <laughs> so I don't recall what the base honey was for this, but I know that the base honey was like something standard. Chill. It was, mm -hmm. it was, it may be too below, but probably like a wildflower or alfalfa or whatever. Yeah. I don't remember. It'll, again, I'll go back and look at my notes. So this was from Bruise Lab. Oh, okay. A Twitch show that we did earlier in the year. Uh huh. Where uh, you were on an episode. Yes. Uh, where we let the audience decide the ingredients. <laughs> and we what could go wrong? Way. What could go wrong? <laughs> go find so, out. <laughs> if I recall, this was the last episode of Bruise Lab mm. before we cut the show because we had a baby. Uh, so um, I had a friend who had a plum tree and she said, could y'all do anything oh, with these plums? Plum. And I said, I'd be happy to turn them into a mead for you. Interesting. And so on Bruise Lab, they the audience wanted to do Janae right by by not wasting her plums with some of the crazy stuff that we usually have yeah. on the show. And so they made every right decision along the way. So we had a, a ton of plums in here. A base honey. I think okay. there was vanilla and primary. I don't remember tannin, but it was probably tea. But everything, they wanted this to be plum centric. Interesting, yeah. And then for back sweetening, they chose meadow foam honey. That. So that's where you're getting those big marshmallowy flavors. I get that. And that is like, I have, I need, I gotta figure out how to break this chain. But ever since, well, we laugh, I'm palate expanders. Yeah, I, I think that's it. I was going with the, the pineapple and, and those sides, but. I don't, my brain is having a hard time saying, is it pepper? Yeah. Or I'm sorry, is it honey or is it fruit? From episodes, episodes ago, where it was a tapache. And my mm. brain was mm. like, this is meadow foam. I have put this, this drawn line between pineapple, pineapple. <laughs> and meadow foam. And That's I funny. literally cannot break it. I don't know how to break the, the, the chain, but <laughs> That's why I said pineapple. Yeah. I, I do get that sugariness. That meadow foam is like identifiable for sure. But mm -hmm. so is pineapple. Well, and what's so interesting is it was kind of a bland plum mead before uh -huh. I back sweetened it. And that meadow foam just did like magical things yeah. in there. It really is a I did honey. a plum mead recently, but I used, I didn't use real plums. I used a plum extract, which uh -huh. who knows if it was even an extract or real. So these I are real know, Oklahoma yeah. plums. <laughs> I don't know that I have real experience with plum in a brewing aspect that did throw me off quite a bit so traditional japanese plum wine is really sweet like it's yeah. a dessert wine and i was tempted to go that deep with it yeah but you can really taste those delicate like like biting into uh -huh. a plum like you can almost taste the gritty flesh of a mm. of a plum and i didn't want to spoil that by sweetening it so much that it just became like do a you flavor. did you de-skin the plum no, no. Did you mash? Them. And, okay, just pit. Pit okay. them and chucked them in. Interesting. I think it turned out really I, good. I'll be the first to admit. I need to have more experience with plums. <laughs> Not only just eating them, but also brewing with them. Yeah. I think that that will be a next fruit to. Um... Our local Asian market stocks all different kinds of plums mm, throughout the year. I need so to... I think you and I should probably like go on a plum journey this year. We've got another we video can... we have to go for there. Anyways, <laughs> that's true. So that's true. No spoilers. No spoilers. <laughs> and so I think I think we could have a lot of fun with plums in mead. Um, I agree. I, yeah, yes, I want to do plum it's right. It's such an interesting flavor. Hashtag do plum right. Plum right. <laughs> Just rolls off the tongue. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> this was interesting. I think I, it turned out really good. I think so too. It's unusual. It is unusual, and I I don't I wish I had more experience with plums to to identify them well. And I don't. Clearly, I'm not yet at that point i was really glad for the opportunity mm -hmm. so janae you're probably not watching <laughs> but if you are thank you for the plums initially she said how many do you need and i was just thinking five gallon batch so i was like oh, i don't know tell her like 
40 pounds. <laughs> Holy <laughs> crap. Like, uh, <laughs> 40. Yeah, no. of course. Of course. People are going to be like, what is wrong with you? All right. Shrug. Are you okay. ready for mine? Yeah. This, this is. This opens up. It gets more perfumey. Did oh, I wait. guess? Did I guess what this is? I don't think you guessed. Okay, hold on. Oh, I almost spoiled. I almost, I almost didn't. We almost skipped a phase. The acid really is is changing as it opens up. Mm -hmm. I'm still gonna go with like a cooked fruit, rich honey, maybe vanilla or oak. Mm, man, there's something perfumey in there too. This one's deep. It's very deep. I don't know that I can identify what the perfumey thing is, though. I think it might be a byproduct of the things mixing together for you. Got it. Okay, well, that's what I got. I got it. It's cooked fruit. This and, is yeah. from July 2021, so it's not, not very old. Okay. Um, this is the first Discord mead I ever made. <laughs> oh, boy. So this was Carlos and I. Uh, Carlos created the recipe. He from Texas pulled, Longhouse Mead? From Texas Longhouse Mead. Whose channel him. will be right up here? <laughs> you can find him uh, at Texas Longhouse Mead. He he did not make the recipe, I'll say that. He presented ingredients and people voted. Okay. And so we came down okay. to the ingredients of black currant. Okay. And uh, I don't remember what kind of honey. Orange zest and vanilla bean. Those are the three main ingredients. Okay, I could see the orange zest and vanilla bean giving some of that perfumey note. Yeah. That's what I mean, it's a byproduct of it's like- It's good. It's not a bad mead. I think I want it to be a little richer. As it opens up, I'm seeing areas where like the the sweetness could be uh -huh. a little bit more the intense. The acidity is like kind of popping. It mm -hmm. kind of comes out some. But overall it works. I, I was surprised <laughs> with, when he said orange zest and vanilla, mm -hmm. I was like, those are two competing factors. That really? Like, when I go to Sonic, I get an orange Fanta with vanilla. But, and it's lovely. Yeah, I, I guess part of it too was black currant. I, I, yeah, I will say, the, yeah. the first step was black currant, which I know is strong. I mean, black currant's a strong flavor. It is, it is. Orange zest, which is a strong flavor. Those seem to go together. Vanilla and black currant to me kind of makes sense, but then those three combinations. So this had like a vanilla bean in for, I don't know how long, X amount of time. And I think it worked well, yeah, X amount of time. So <laughs> I no, was, it, it turned out really lovely. I was pleased with this. This I, could have been a lot worse. I absolutely agree. <laughs> I think that when you open, as you have brought, which is very fun that you have brought a a Twitch show brew. That is a great point. And I have brought a Discord mead show. I hadn't thought about that. These are both crowdsourced recipes. This was not planned <laughs> at all, by the way. We literally don't tell each other anything about That's what we've brought. That's funny. So, um, huh. I thought it worked out on both fronts. Yeah. I think that uh, clearly our viewers who watch this and join our discords and Twitch shows know what they're talking about. So they know their way around. Go the check recipe. out BC's. I think he's restarted a new season of sorts um, somewhere. I don't, I don't know what you're doing nowadays, but it's On new, Twitch? right? Yeah. Don't you have a new thing? Uh, no. Well, yes and no. Okay. I have an idea for 2022 mm. Twitch stream, which I'll tell you about later. <laughs> <laughs> and you can find that um, we both have discords, so I'll put his link here yeah. and my link here. Both of our discords are, are I mean, super user friendly. Literally, you just hop in there and you can ask any question in the universe and someone will come in and help you out. And I think super that's- Super helpful. That is what's nice about having a community that is, YouTube is a fine community, but there are, you'll find that you get more hostility than um, helpfulness sometimes. That's so, true. Going yeah. to Discord, most of the people who join Discord are not there to be hostile. So go check out his Discord, go check out my Discord. Join us, we literally want to talk. That is why we're there, to talk about yeah. this. And we're both active on both. Yes, we, yeah. we are both around. Um, so if you want to talk to us, there's a way to find us. Uh, I am super pleased with this, and I, I yeah. love that somehow we ended up. That's pretty weird. It, oh, it is, whenever we first got here, <laughs> I'm glad I did this. I, I yeah. picked the two capped bottles. As That's the funny. Yeah, because the first episode we recorded, they were both basically the same looking and tasting uh -huh. product. And then here they both came from the same It is like user-generated area. So. Good times. 
I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, you can find maybe BC's video of this brew if it exists, we'll slash see. not really. <laughs> we'll see. Um, we'll see, see if Twitch kept it. <laughs> <laughs> and you can find mine um, is up somewhere in the description. But it's been a lot of fun. We cannot finish this video until you cap <sighs> off this moment. I forgot about this. You you almost got out of it. I did. You almost you tried. Did. You were getting that glass ready to tip. I was. I was ready for the, the end of the video. Cheers. It's not not yet, my friend. <laughs> you have I've yet, earned it. <laughs> you've earned it. Oh man, it's been so long. Um because I when I tasted this, I think it was in either primary or just went into secondary. Oh boy. Now, to be no, fair. Because there was still fruit in it when I tasted it. <laughs> to be fair, I, the other night, I tasted the one that was the fruit and spice dump. Okay. Which had just a, a ridiculous amount of cinnamon, of cinnamon and clove and other things in. Also. Oh boy. So, this is the freezer dump mead that BC alluded to, and he said the key word which brought out this monstrosity. Cantaloupe, apples. <laughs> Here's the list of fruit that are in it. <laughs> Let's just... Uh... <coughs> Let's scroll down the list. One. <laughs> Here's your prize. <laughs> hey, uh, Vanna White. This has a... This smells like fruit cocktail. <laughs> like when you're a kid, yes. you know, like in the lunch line, they slop it on your plate. Next. <laughs> it smells like melons. There's cantaloupe. There's cantaloupe in here. <laughs> yeah, I can, I've never I brewed a cantaloupe except for this one time, and it is potent. Yeah, it it smells like fruit cocktail. <laughs> that is rancid. <laughs> Did you not sweeten this? <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> now a top. Is it the worst you've ever tasted? Because I will I was gladly just about to say, admit I think this our is the worst. Score at Mead Stampede was like an 18, and I would give this a 15, like on the you spot. Would give it a 15? This is gross, dude. I would give it like a four. Like... <laughs> <laughs> You're being generous, dude. This. I mean, it's like a. You tried. <laughs> Did I try? This is I can't good. take another I step can't. of it. No, here's the thing. I'll say it smells Ooh. really good. It, I got big whiffs of nostalgia on yeah. on the the nose. The After flavor. Wine, and then it the flavor is kisser. disgusting. Um, I think the the point of this is yikes. Um, freezer dump meads dumping everything that you have in your freezer is probably not the choice it's a real gamble he can be a little more tactical i would say yeah <laughs> so yum that, yum so i'm gonna switch back to this go check out doing the most and um we will not do this again but we'll see you next time thank you for the opportunity <laughs>